The Toronto Blue Jays promoted Alec Manoa to the major league level after a minuscule 35 innings in the minor leagues. The West Virginia University product sports a four-pitch mix and has a fantastic resume no matter which level you look at for his performance. But there's one pitch in his repertoire that kind of defies the metrics, and that's Manoa's four-seam fastball. Despite good velocity, the pitch grades as only average or even slightly below average in terms of vertical and horizontal movement. And in the age of organizations valuing high carry fastballs, fastballs with good carry that kind of drop less than a hitter expects, Manoa doesn't really fit the bill at all. But he does have one thing working for him that I think is relatively important. It's known as vertical approach angle, or VAA. And that's why I'll say Alec Manoa's fastball is even better than you think it is. Now, before we get going on VAA, I will point out that Alec Manoa's first two starts were wildly divergent outings. In his first start, he went into Yankee Stadium and absolutely shoved. And then in his second start, he went back to Dunedin and got kind of beat up by the Miami Marlins. But for the purposes of this video, I'm actually going to be throwing away the data in his second start. It's a bit of a risk, but the reason I'm doing this is because I've seen the minor league data for Manoa that includes velocity, movement, etc. throughout his minor league career. And that broad sample is much better represented in that first start than it is in the second start. So I think for the most part going forward, it's a little bit cloudy if we want to assume that that second start is more representative of who he is as a pitcher. I'm going to bet that it's more of the first start. And for the simplicity of this video, I think it's going to be a little more applicable and help us understand why Manoa is very good. So what is vertical approach angle? Simply put, vertical approach angle is the descent angle of the ball as it arrives at home plate. Let's break this down visually. Every ball thrown in baseball drops because of gravity. Even if it's just a little bit of drop or that drop isn't obvious to the naked eye on television, it's there. The actual angle in vertical approach angle is the angle at which the ball crosses home plate. So if you mark the path of a pitch as it crosses home and use a straight line for reference, the angle created as the pitch crosses the plate is the vertical approach angle of that pitch. Now this can be influenced by something like release height. If you take two identical pitches going to the same spot in the zone, but one is thrown from a lower release height, it will have a flatter VAA or a more acute angle. And this lower release height is generally where you see vertical approach angle come into play the most. If a pitcher doesn't have a ton of vertical movement on their fastball, yet they generate whiffs on pitches at the top of the zone, it could be because they're able to create that rise effect or a pitch that drops less than a hitter expects because of where they release the ball. And that effect is captured in a metric like vertical approach angle. The best examples of this are three absolute studs, Jacob deGrom, Josh Hader, and Craig Kimbrell. They all throw pitches that aren't outliers in their pitch movement, but they stand out in a metric like VAA. Sort by forcing fastball vertical approach angle leaders, and they're routinely at the top. Their combination of low release height, average forcing fastball vertical movement, high velocity, and the intended location of their fastballs allows them to flatten out that vertical approach angle and create an elite offering. But you don't need a flat vertical approach angle to be elite. VAA has been shown to correlate with success at the top of the zone. Flat pitches work up in the zone. But as with most things in baseball, there are multiple ways to succeed. Take James Karachak, for example. He releases from a very high release height, which biases his vertical approach angle to be steeper than a pitcher like Josh Hader's. But because he gets an elite amount of vertical movement and throws hard, the pitch still succeeds at the top of the zone. Context regarding how and why certain pitchers succeed compared to others is valuable information. Now let's take a look at Alec Manoa in the context of vertical approach angle. For the most part, we know that that pitch grades out relatively positive on the velocity spectrum, but on the vertical movement and horizontal movement spectrum, it's kind of average or even slightly below average. But Manoa creates a relatively flat VAA with that pitch, which means that it's approaching the zone at a flat angle, as we kind of talked about. So despite the movement on that offering, what Manoa is able to do is actually create a pitch that works despite the movement at the top of the zone. It might generate a little bit more swing and miss than we're expecting based on purely the pitch movement. The vertical approach angle on Alec Manoa's fastball is 4.3 degrees, which is inside the 92nd percentile in baseball. To put it another way, only 8% of pitchers in baseball with more than 20 pitches thrown this season have a flatter vertical approach angle than Alec Manoa. Manoa also has another factor working for him that I've been kind of curious about. Remember how I said release height plays a big role in vertical approach angle? 
Well, Manoa is huge, standing at six foot six, but despite that size, his release height is actually slightly below league average. So for his release height, he's achieving a vertical approach angle that not many other pitchers can generate on their four-seam fastballs. If you plot all pitchers' release heights next to their vertical approach angle, you'll see a strong correlation. As release heights go down, vertical approach angle on four-seam fastballs get flatter. But you'll also see that Manoa's specific combo of release height and vertical approach angle is uncommon. In fact, there really isn't a pitcher in baseball with a flatter four-seam fastball vertical approach angle at that specific release height than Alec Manoa. You'd need to lower the release point of the pitcher based on the sample of pitchers in the majors right now to find a flatter vertical approach angle on four-seam fastballs around Manoa's release height. And as with most things in baseball, it's usually good to stay away from that average. And this distinct combo of a flat vertical approach angle from a higher release height actually pushes Manoa away from the average. And as a result, this allows us to reconcile between Manoa's passable four-seam pitch movement and his exceptional results. Among all four-seam fastballs in baseball, Manoa has the highest swing and miss percentage in baseball at 22%, with a minimum of 50 total pitches thrown. I don't think he'll stay ahead of guys like Hayter, DeGrom, and Karinjak for the entirety of his career, but even if he regresses, there's a good chance he'll live in the top quarter of the league in terms of four-seam effectiveness. And vertical approach angle is part of the reason why. Now, does vertical approach angle have limitations? Absolutely. Vertical approach angle is extremely dependent on location. So if a pitcher isn't throwing his pitch at the top of the zone, it will naturally have a steeper vertical approach angle, even if you don't change any of the pitch movement characteristics. There's many ways to adjust for this, but my guy Alex Chamberlain, whose pitch leaderboard I've mentioned numerous times on this channel, has an adjusted vertical approach angle number that strips out the location of the pitch and tries to look at the angle independent of location, essentially saying, what is the vertical approach angle of this pitch independent of where it is located? And thankfully, Manoa ranks just as high in this adjusted vertical approach angle, telling us that his VAA isn't biased to be flat because he's throwing a ton of pitches above the strike zone or at the top of the strike zone. I've also talked with some scouts who don't fully buy into the metric as being useful, basically saying that it's just describing something we already knew. For example, a scouting note on Hayter could have been, quote, effective fastball because of velocity, angle, and release height, end quote, without knowing the concept of vertical approach angle, and they're both pretty much pointing out the same thing. But my argument for VAA there would be that vertical approach angle is a good way to confirm this observation, rather than relying on VAA as a crutch independent of other context. Another coach in an organization told me that he really only sees value in it at the tails, or the outliers of vertical approach angle, rather than saying that the big bucket of vertical approach angles kind of clustered around the average, or even slightly above average or desirable at all. His argument was to chase velocity and good pitch movement independent of vertical approach angle, and you'll succeed. After all, velocity is one of the best predictors of success in pitching. So make of this what you will. The Toronto Blue Jays and other organizations seem to really value this metric, whereas some other orgs kind of push it to the side and don't care about it too much. But at the end of the day, I think it adds context, and context is extremely important. It helps us understand why guys like Jacob deGrom, Craig Kimbrell, Josh Hader, and now Alec Manoa might be better than their granular pitch movement data would suggest. And for the most part, I think that makes it pretty valuable.